will close up for a week and then reopen. Just took over the bank. I may lose a fortune, but I am willing to guarantee your people too. Just tell them to bring their shares over here and I will pay 50 cents on the dollar. Oh, you never miss a trick, do you, Potter? Unfortunately, J.P. Morgan got away with the deception and was able to shut down competitors and snapped up assets at fire sale prices. Uh, take during the Depression, for instance. You and I were the only ones that kept our heads. You saved the building and loan. I saved all the rest. Yes, well, most people say you stole all the rest. The envious ones say that, George. The suckers. Charles Lindbergh Sr. warned people at the time of the creation of the Federal Reserve that it would not stop boom and bust cycles, but would actually create them in order to benefit its private owners. Here's what he said. To cause high prices, all the Federal Reserve Board will do will be to lower the rediscount rate, producing an expansion of credit and a rising stock market. Then, when businessmen are adjusted to these conditions, it can check prosperity in mid-career by arbitrarily raising the rate of interest. It can cause a pendulum of rising and falling market to swing gently back and forth or cause violent fluctuations by a greater rate variation. And in either case, it will possess inside information as to the financial conditions and advanced knowledge of the coming change, either up or down. This is the strangest, most dangerous advantage ever placed in the hands of a special privileged class by any government that ever existed. The system is private, conducted for the sole purpose of obtaining the greatest possible profits from the use of other people's money. They know in advance when to create panics to their advantage, and they know when to stop panic. Inflation and deflation work equally well for them when they control the finance. As we see in the movie, not all lending institutions have the same motivations. Now, you take this loan here, the Ernie Bishop. You know, that fellow that sits around all day on his brains in his taxi, you know. I happen to know the bank turned down this loan. But he comes here... And we're building him a house worth $5,000. Why? Well, I handled that, Mr. Potter. You have all the papers there, his salary, insurance. I can personally vouch for his character. Friend of yours. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. You see, if you shoot pool with some employee here, you can come and borrow money. <laughs> what does that get us? A discontented, lazy rabble instead of a thrifty working class. As a former FDIC chair said, all too often the large banks use their models and their algorithms, and if you don't fit in their boxes, you don't get the loan. And Dodd-Frank legislation is tying the hands of small lenders, shutting out buyers and shutting down lenders. Today, there are fewer lenders than at any time the government has kept records. 10,000 banks disappeared between 1984 and 2011. This town needs this measly one-horse institution, if only to have some place where people can come without crawling to Potter. Come on. In the movie, George gets to see what happens to the small town if Potter didn't have competition from credit unions and smaller lenders. If it hadn't been for you... Yeah, if it hadn't been for me, everybody would be a lot better off. My wife and my kids and my friends. I mean, look, little fellow, why you go off and haunt somebody else? Yeah, so you still think killing yourself would make everyone feel happier, right? Eh? Oh, I don't know. I guess you're right. I suppose it's been better if I'd never been born at all. Pottersville, the only businesses thriving are vice. People are angry. The town is filled with signs like, keep moving, keep off the grass. Bert the cop actually shoots at George when he's running away and is no threat to anyone. Stand back! Everyone is a renter. No one has a stake. Now, you're Ernie Bishop, and you live in Bailey Park with your wife and kid. Look, bud, what's the idea? I live in a shack in Pottersfield. My wife ran away three years ago and took the kid, and I ain't never seen you before in my life, see? Private property and everyone having a stake is the antidote to Pottersville. Here, you're all businessmen here. Don't it make them better citizens? Doesn't it make them better customers? But whether it's the Trans-Pacific Partnership or a global carbon tax, the global elite don't see you as a stakeholder. They want to turn us all into serfs and treat us like cattle. Just remember this, Mr. Potter, that this rabble you're talking about, they do most of the working and paying and living and dying in this community. Well, is it too much to have them work and pay and live and die in a couple of decent rooms and a bath? Anyway, my father didn't think so. People were human beings to him, but to you, a warped, frustrated old man, they're cattle. 
Well, in my book, he died a much richer man than you'll ever be. I'm not interested in your book. I'm talking about the building and loan. I know very well what you're talking about. You're talking about something you can't get your fingers on. Speaking of riches, do you find the salary amounts amusing when Potter tries to buy George off? Let's look at your side. <laughs> Young man, 27, 28, married, making, say, 40 a week. 45. 45. 45. George, I'll start you out at $20,000 a year. $20,000 a year? You wouldn't mind living in the nicest house in town? Buying your wife a lot of fun. That was like a million dollars. A couple of business trips to New York a year. Maybe once in a while, Europe. You wouldn't mind that, would you, George? Would I? Even if George had saved a lot of his $20,000 salary, would it have bought much a couple of decades later? By even the government's very conservative estimate of inflation, the dollar has lost 90% of its value since 1947 when the movie was made. The Fed's deliberate inflation is devastating to anyone trying to accumulate wealth through hard work and saving. So what is the answer to all the George Baileys out there 100 years after the government gave control of our money supply to private bankers like Potter? Well... Potter had more money than he could spend. But would any of you want to be Potter? You sit around here and you spin your little webs and you think the whole world revolves around you and your money. Well, it doesn't, Mr. Potter. In the, in the whole vast configuration of things, I'd say you were nothing but a scurvy little spider. George Bailey finally sees how rich his own life is as he sees the fruits of relationship, honesty, and compassion. In jail. Go on home. They're waiting for you. <laughs> and if the public can awaken to the lies of the Federal Reserve, if it could even be audited. Well, hello, Mr. Bank Examiner. Hi. It would be a huge step to breaking the chains that enslave all of us. But ultimately, it is God that changes minds and changes hearts. God hates oppression. And we can and should confidently pray that he will stop it. I owe everything to George Bailey. Help him, dear father. Joseph, Jesus, and Mary, help my friend, Mr. Bailey. Help my son, George, tonight. He never thinks about himself, God. That's why he's in trouble. George is a good guy. Give him a break, God. I love him, dear Lord. Watch over him tonight. Please, God, something's the matter with Daddy. Please bring Daddy back. Dear Father in Heaven, I'm not a praying man, but if you're up there and you can hear me, show me the way. For the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. A good, wholesome... Nine minute review under all fair use. We're doing commentary. We're analyzing. We're doing a review. It's a film that's been around for 80 years. And they don't want you to see that review. They are scared of the idea that people want an equal playing field to credit, an equal playing field to have a lot of small businesses. And the people back then knew that big, powerful robber barons were trying to shut them down using government regulation. I remember about four years ago when they passed a bunch of new, quote, bank regulations, the head of the Texas Banking Association wrote an article for the Texas Business Journal. It was in the Austin Business Journal. I saw it several places saying these new regulations are meant to shut down competition and to absolutely rake people over the coals. And the article went into the private Federal Reserve. So even the heads of of state banking boards know what's going on. Well, of course they know what's going on. But now they're speaking about it. It's safe now. Fifteen years ago, if you talked about this, they would send the ADL and Southern Poverty Law Center, and you might have the FBI come to your house. Or come to your business. We're here to do a emergency audit for fraud. These are federal marshals from the Treasury Department. They would come after you if you were in business and even talked about this. Guess what? You lose, New World Order. The House this year and two years ago passed 
the audit, the Senate barely defeated it. That's from no co-sponsors just 15, 16, 17 years ago for Ron Paul. The jig is up. The truth is coming out. And even you even have Fed chairman in Dallas and Missouri that have come out and said the Fed's become destructive. It was always destructive, but we need to reform it. We need to stop it. We need to stop giving free money to these offshore elites. We need to stop devaluing the dollar. I happen to know people, and I'll just leave it at that, that know the Kansas City and Dallas Fed heads. And they know that this is going to destroy the country. Sure, they don't mind being parts of big banks and running things back when they were actually giving some credit to people. Now it's purely a screw job, purely a screw job. And so even people in their own system don't want to be part of it, don't want to wreck their children and grandchildren's future. This will make us like Pottersville when there's death in the streets. That's what it creates. We don't want that. This broadcast is about exposing the hat trick, exposing the scam. Now, this clip's about seven years old. It was the outgoing head of the Federal Reserve right after he left, Alan Greenspan, who wrote books about the New World Order and about the private Federal Reserve. So they bought him off. He was a smart economist, friends with Ron Paul. Here he is, they say, on the Lair News Hour. He's asked, what is the role of Federal Reserve? And he says, well, just that no other group of government can audit us or look at us, and, and we're independent. Checks and balances on the three branches of government. Legislative, executive, judicial. Legislative controls the power of the purse. Not this fourth branch, foreign robber baron bankers. But that's how far we've come, where there's the occupier. If he was wearing a Hitler monkey suit or a Stalin monkey suit or a Fidel Castro monkey suit, no one would go along with it. But it's a little man in a suit with little glasses in an American accent telling you this when he is as foreign as Martians to our system. Now let's go to this clip. I apply it. I have the ideology because I believe that it is the best way of coming at the world and what type of policy. What is the uh, proper relationship, what should be the proper relationship between a chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? Well, first of all, the Federal Reserve is an independent agency, and that means basically that uh, there is no ag other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take so long as that is in place and there is no evidence that uh, the administration or the congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter and uh, what a that, uh, very profound statement what a profound statement it doesn't matter what Congress thinks. We're above the law. No one can tell us what to do, and we're an agency. What, like Cobra? Like Spectre? Like the man in the moon? I mean, this is how our ignorance empowers the system. And then I'm a conspiracy theorist because I'm informed. No. And that line doesn't work anymore. Second hour, masses of key global news. And we'll talk to the Northeast Intelligence Group coming up. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Sold out for weeks through the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014. The most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra-clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. 
problems. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12, Secret 12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your New Year's resolutions. Supplies of Secret 12 are very limited. Secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show.